Welcome everyone. Welcome to Mike Fave YouTube, where we simplify complex pro metabolic topics into short, easy to understand videos. So you don't need a PhD to improve your health. In today's video, we're going to dive into cortisol and cravings. Now, cortisol is essentially the emergency services hormone that provides our body with adequate glucose when we're in short supply. You can think of it kind of like a banker. So our stores of glucose are our glycogen stores in our liver and our protein tissues. That's our muscles, that's our bones, that's our skin. These are our glucose savings account. Now when energy starts to run low, cortisol as the banker helps us to dip into our savings and our retirement accounts to provide us with the carb-based fuels that we need, the glucose-based fuel that we need. Now, the first line of defense, so the first area that cortisol dips into is going to be that liver glucose store in the form of glycogen. Now, our liver glycogen stores are essentially our personal savings accounts. They are our first line of reserves. They are the, the, are the accounts that we would normally consider our debit accounts that we're depositing money into and withdrawing money on a regular basis. These are the accounts that we're depositing glucose into or carbohydrates into and withdrawing on a regular basis. Now, once we exhaust these personal savings accounts, once we blow through our glycogen stores, the next thing that we start to see cortisol do is pull from our 401k and our retirement accounts. This is essentially our protein tissues like our muscles, our skin, and our bones. And these protein tissues are broken down, converted to amino acids, and then the liver takes those amino acids and converts them into glucose. Now, initially, pulling from liver glycogen, before we get to the digging into this retirement accounts, just pulling from the everyday savings accounts, no big deal. You can do that all the time. It happens all the time. It happens when you deposit when you have a meal, you withdraw when your meal finishes. However, pulling from the retirement accounts, degrading the, the, these protein tissues, the muscle, the skin, the bones, is definitely not something that we want to do on a regular basis. Essentially, this comes at a huge cost. Depleting liver glycogen, not such a big cost. We can always replenish it easily. But starting to break down our protein tissues is a much bigger cost because the, those protein tissues are essentially our structural functions. And then the other thing is cort ramping cortisol up to these higher levels has some specific effects, kind of like when you try to withdraw from your 401k or retirement account, you get hit with a penalty. Now, some of the problems with cortisol, at least initially, is it is immunosuppressive and it does alter other hormones. So as an example, the cortisol can lower thyroid function and then it can also lower the sex steroid function. That's the progesterone, testosterone, di dihydrotestosterone, estradiol for men and for women. Now, as, as this continues over the long term, the effects of cortisol become even worse. So chronically elevated cortisol becomes quite problematic. And this is where you see high blood pressure, fatty liver, diabetes, increased of that visceral fat, that toxic fat, damage to the brain, damage to the, to the bones or weakening of the bones, a lowering of energy metabolism over the long term. And this is secondary to damaging the hormonal profile as well as damaging the mitochondria. So essentially, cortisol is pulling sugar from our stores to help us survive right now. However, this comes at the expense of our future structure and function. It's essentially a loan on our retirement account with heavy interest. Now, here's a silver lining. We can easily prevent the, having to take this loan and having to <laughs> do it at such a high interest rate. And the way we can do that is we make sure that we have enough carbohydrates on our diet. We can make sure that we are eating enough carbohydrates each and every day. We can make sure that the carbohydrates are spread evenly across the day, and we can make sure that we have quick and easy carbohydrate-based snack options that we can pull from in times of unpredictable circumstances or with increased needs of carbs or energy. And this will allow us to minimize our withdrawals from our savings account, minimize tapping in to that 401k and that retirement account, our muscle, our bones, and our skin, and allow us to actually maintain adequate glycogen stores on a regular basis so that at least we are not elevating cortisol because we don't have enough energy. If you have an inflammatory circumstance, it's a little bit different. Cortisol also raises under inflammation, 
but we want to keep it down from a uh, an energy perspective so that we're not raising the stress hormone because we don't have enough energy on board. Now, this ultimately will protect us from a couple of really important things. So it will maintain our muscle mass. Now, maintaining our muscle mass is extremely important because as we get older, we start to suffer from something called sarcopenia, which is the loss of lean tissue. It also maintains our bone mass so we can avoid uh, osteopenia, which is the loss of bone mass, and osteoporosis. So we don't want to have this upregulation of the stress hormone cortisol because it breaks down bones and muscle. And then the other thing that it does is it also lowers the important hormones that are necessary to maintaining our bone and our muscle mass as well. So it's a dual, it's a dual edged effect. The other thing is cortisol chronically upregulated starts to really damage the, the mitochondria. So not having elevated cortisol can actually protect our mitochondria in the long term. Cortisol is known to de degrade the brain, particularly the hippocampus, the memory storing areas of the brain. So we, in order to preserve our mental function, we want to make sure we're not running on high stress hormones over the long term. There's an immunosuppressive effect, and then there's an inflammatory effect of cortisol over the long term by switching the balance of the immune system. And the other thing is cortisol actually puts quite a bit of pressure on our metabolic system, and that's in terms of our blood glucose regulation, our lipid profile, and our liver, and also our fat distribution. So if we want to maintain a lean, healthy body, and we want to make sure we don't have diabetes or prediabetes or insulin resistance or glucose intolerance or fatty liver, we want to make sure that we're keeping stress hormones low over the long term. And one of the major ways to do that is not dig into them by pr producing huge energy deficits. We want to make sure we have adequate energy on board. Particularly, we want to make sure we have adequate carbohydrate on board. Now, the other benefit of eating adequate carbohydrate on a regular basis in order to keep our stress hormone cortisol low is that we actually manage our cravings effectively. So we can minimize our cravings. And then when we do develop cravings, we have different options if we've prepared appropriate stacks to actually target those cravings. Now, the nuance here is that it's important to choose your sugary comfort foods wisely. We don't want to choose foods that are high in sugars, but also contain compounds like heated polyunsaturated fatty acids or, or seed oils or industrial additives that damage our metabolism and our microbiome and our metabolic function while we are trying to cope with the stress. We also don't want to choose foods that are low in vitamins and minerals and, and lack these important nutrients like some of the plant compounds and whatnot. So we want to be optimizing for foods that are low in toxins, high in vitamins and minerals, and that are well digested so that they don't start to derange the microbiome. Now, the foods that I generally tend to use with my client base are foods like fruits. That could be frozen fruits. That could be fresh fruits. That could be dried fruits. Then I like to use things like tubers, that could be potatoes, that could be yam, that could be taro, that could be cassava. And then certain tolerated grains for some people are also fine. That could be things like rice and, uh, rice and oats. Now, the last piece I want to mention here is tolerance is key. So individual people will respond to different foods differently. Some people may tolerate, uh, you know, uh, uh, higher sugary carb sources in the form of fruits and juices, and other people will do better with starches. And it, this can also depend on activity level. If you have somebody who is, you know, exercising heavily is quite lean, they may need a higher amount of rapidly digesting carb sources like juice that don't provide a lot of bulk and volume, so that they're able to actually meet their energy demands based on their activity. Whereas somebody's more sedentary, maybe they don't need to smash juice all day long because they don't have such high energy needs. And then they can rely more on whole fruits and they can rely more on these different starch sources and whatnot. Now, if you're looking for the specific carbohydrate calculations that I use for myself and that I use for my clients, as well as the sources, you can check those out in the nutrition blueprint uh, PDF and its associated video course, which is in the, which is in the description. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.